Britain. He came from the Middle East. He was a failed asylum seeker. Uh, he had, we were told, converted to Christianity. Now it's claimed that the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, is saying that uh, basically uh, he was, uh, like many others, uh, using, it would appear, our dysfunctional asylum system uh, to game the system. Uh, Home Office sources have said that he, like many, have been converting to Christianity simply as a way of mounting an appeal against uh, being deported. He, of course, was lost his uh, asylum that he could claim in 2014 and yet seven years later still in the country uh, despite actually brandishing a knife and being sectioned at one point for mental health problems after losing uh, his asylum appeal. Let's talk to uh, Dr Alan Mendoza. He's an executive director of the Henry Jackson Society. Good morning to you Alan. Good morning Julia. We spoke to you earlier this week when uh, we were just getting news about, about this man and, and getting his identity and what had actually happened on the day. Um, we're now learning a lot more about it. What do you make of this claim from Priti Patel, the Home Secretary and other Home Office sources, this idea that they're asylum seekers, you know, they fail, uh, they need a, a ground for appeal. And this allegation, the front of the Telegraph being very clear, that you know, the Church of England is basically giving them information and helping them and deliberately helping them to supposedly convert to Christianity and that this was happening in Liverpool Cathedral where uh, this man apparently converted uh, as a way of staying in the country, gaming the system, Priti Patel criticising the human rights, criticising uh, the lawyers in the past and also now criticising our dysfunctional system. Is she right? Well, yeah, of course she's right. I mean, this is an extraordinary turn up of events. I mean, it's probably not surprising, judging by the um, the asylum uh, legal system that's built up and the industry that's built up around trying to keep asylum seekers who failed in their bids to come to the UK uh, staying here. And of course, this conversion issue is one of them. Um, it, it's interesting to note it's not simply Pretty Rattel saying this. Um, church figures within the, the very... Uh, uh, cathedral where um, he was converted have stated that they are suspicious of the number of converts who've come through and of course there is then the question of um of you know of why the church is engaged in this activity when it knows that it's being gamed as part of it these people uh, may well not be genuine converts so the whole thing is a is a, is a mess um and it, it just shows you why we've got to crack down on this system to make sure that people who are coming into this country and who are then refused entry are then deported and not allowed to find reasons to stay and when they've already been rejected yeah, indeed. I mean, and this is the thing. Um, we just spoke to, in the last half hour, Lord Carlyle, who's the former reviewer of uh, terrorism legislation, uh, legislation, and he said it was outrageous for Priti Patel uh, to blame the church or to blame uh, the courts. And he said it was tosh and nonsense that things like the Human Rights Act, which is often blamed, is, is preventing us from having a, a, a working system. Do you think he's right or is she right there? Well, Lord Carlyle is entitled to his view, but the reality is we have a case here of somebody who um, was repeatedly denied asylum in this country, who underwent a conversion route that we are told by people in that church is, is viewed as suspect, and who then committed a terrorist atrocity uh, on these shores. I, I'm not sure we need more evidence than that, that the system is broken. Yeah. How many terrorist atrocities you know, do we need before we think that actually there might be a problem with the system as it stands at the moment? And we're often told, aren't we, you know, that, that people people who are concerned about, you know, asylum seekers, failed asylum seekers, migrants, particularly, you know, the channel migrants being talked about that, you know, more than 1,100 turning up on Thursday alone last week. Um, I mean, terrifying numbers, frankly, and which we're told actually by experts, you know, actually, these are not unusual numbers uh, coming over. They used to just go through routes that weren't quite so visible. We just couldn't get it on camera, so we weren't really aware of it. But um, this huge number of people who, who are undocumented a lot of the time, they, you know, this man, you know, apparently uh, the Ahmad, Ahmad al Swahiman, he, he has an Iraqi mother, a, a, a Syrian father, but he'd come from Jordan. The reason he failed in his asylum seeking pledge was uh, because he was actually an economic migrant from Jordan and therefore was not eligible uh, for asylum. But um, we're often told that, but saying that this is an issue and this is a danger for our society, that is, you know, huge numbers of young men we've got no idea who they are or where they've come from or what their motives are coming into this country some yes desperate some waiting hoping to form a new life some i'm sure some of them will end up being heart surgeons eventually but the reality is you know we don't know whether more people like so i mean are, are coming on boats and arriving here and getting to stay here and we don't know what their motive is or why they're here or what they're going to do just that's not xenophobic or, or or racist or or unreasonable to have those concerns is it no of course it isn't and look you, you start off with the with the key premise which is these are illegal immigrants there's not someone railing about the state of legal immigration and going oh bloody foreigners they want to see them uh, you know on the shores these are people who have failed 
in their legal attempt to this come, come to this country, which I don't think anyone would have any uh, problem with if they passed in that way. And instead, they have tried to stay in this country illegally and extend their stay in whatever way. And we have many of these cases uh, coming in, as you've highlighted. And as you say, we don't know who they are because they're not documented properly. We don't know what they believe or what they intend to do here. And we don't know in this particular instance if they're capable of you know, kind of committing yeah. terrorist atrocities. That is not the way for any country to behave. It's not a xenophobic issue. It's a national security issue. Uh, Alan Mendoza, really appreciate you joining us. Director of the Henry Jackson Society. 